On these lazy days off between Christmas and New Year, I'm often at a loose end for just a few hours. I'm reminded of the acronym WWAPD. Or what would Alan Partridge do? Shitty zombies. I'm going nowhere, Len. Not quite literally, I'm on the ring road. The third time round. <laughs> just been into B&Q for a bag of tungsten tipped screws. I'm never going to use them. Never going to use them. It's a beautiful day. Take her out to a, a local fort or a Victorian folly. So for today's video, I'm off to Mocop Castle, which it turns out is actually a folly. For those who don't know, a folly is a building constructed purely for decorative aesthetic, but often suggesting a different purpose. A bit like the three stars on Man City's old badge. Stars are usually used by clubs to denote 10 domestic championship titles or a Champions League title. Theirs were purely decorative. Today I'll be leaving the A34 at Asbury, a lovely little village, and taking the country lanes to give you some nicer scenery to look at. Oh, 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 lay by with a view, lay by with a view, a possible photo opportunity, lay by with a view. <laughs> <Many more. laughs> there are potholes galore up here, and I reckon you could probably swim in some of them. So I'm sure my brother will be glad we didn't come this way when he was with me. Fucking hell. If you come up here after watching this video and happen to fall in one of them, I accept no liability. Do not assume these are little puddles. Be very careful where you park and walk. The view from up here is pretty good, or at least it would be on a clear day. On a day like this though, the weather can add a bit of atmosphere, but I wanted to use a narrow aperture to get as much of the landscape in focus as possible. And the gloomy light meant that I either needed to sacrifice my shutter speed to let more light in, which would show motion blur from me triggering the shutter, or I'd have to ramp up the ISO, which would introduce noise, making the image look grainy. In the end, I opted to keep the ISO at 100. Now in hindsight, I should have taken one at ISO 100 and another one at up to 800 or so. Noise would have looked pretty minimal, but I think the shot would have looked a bit sharper. But the whole thing was a total rush job. I was not only rapidly losing light in an already dark sky, but Storm Garrett was also looming. And unbeknown to me at the time, it was closer than I thought. Anyway, one shot in the bag and nothing else in this location grabbing my eye. So it was straight onto the main objective now. Back to the B-roll. Now it's probably worth noting that this is a route that horses are often seen on. On flat ground, I could have just idled the bike in second uh, to overtake nice and wide with low revs. But on a hill like this, which is actually steeper than this looks, um, I had to give it a few revs, but you know, try and keep it as low as possible, as far away from the horse as possible, so, so as not to startle it. Mocop Castle was a summer house built in 1754 for Randall Wilbraham, who owned nearby Road Hall. 
The interior is currently the only bit in ruin. The exterior is all as it was designed, to look like a ruin centuries older than it actually is. The view from the top provides a near 360 degree view of the surrounding area and due to a combination of the elevation of this hill and the flat topography of most of Cheshire, you can see as far as, I think, Snowdonia to the west. I'll have to come back another time with my 120 to 300 mil lens and check that out. In the mid 1800s, there was a row between Randall Wilbraham and Ralph Sneed, Sneed, Sneed of Keel Hall. Uh, they had a dispute over the ownership of the property because of whose land it was built on. It fell into disrepair, but was then restored to its original state. After the renovation, it was ruled that because the boundary cut through the land that it was built on, both parties should share the building and the cost of the upkeep, as well as providing free access to the public. Again, it fell into disrepair. And in 1923, the castle and all the surrounding lands were purchased from the late Sir Philip Baker Wilbraham and the Bishop of Derby for the purpose of quarrying. There was then a legal battle over this up until 1935, and in June 1937, it was handed over to the National Trust. In 2002, it underwent £80,000 worth of repairs and now features reinforced arches and climbing spikes. The wind was really starting to pick up, so I went for the obvious shot halfway up the path, getting the big rock in the foreground with the folly standing proud up top. Check out how windy it had gotten at this point. Hello. <laughs> uh... <laughs> So because of the wind, here's me gesticulating that the rule of thirds has played a big part in the composition of this shot. The folly intersects with the rocks where the two lines intersect. The foreground rock is also aligned to an intersection, as is the path on the right. And now on to the second photo. For this shot, I'm on a higher rock, but have kept low and close to the foreground rock to make it appear bigger. For the angle, I like how it looks as though the foreground rock has fallen onto the one behind and they're having like a domino effect all the way over to the folly. At this point, it was getting cold, dark and very windy, so I packed up and headed home for a hot brew and some editing. Well, you've already seen the edited shots from today. I wasn't overly impressed, but I did quite like the moody feeling, rule of thirds composition and the leading lines of the second shot. Let me know your thoughts below. If you like the video, please show some support by clicking the like button, subscribing and clicking the notification bell. It all helps get the channel noticed by the algorithm. And now the channel's starting up properly, I need all the support I can get. Thank you so much for watching and I'll hopefully see you again. Cheers.